right, well, let's talk about coding this project. Um, and I'm going to just talk through the basic idea. And you'll have to work out the details and uh, anything that you'll want to add to it, anything special that you'll want to add to it. But let's think about what the basics of the program are. You have to be able to input a sequence, and <coughs> it has to uh, recognize when you've reached a certain sequence, and it should have some sort of output. So whether you do that output as an LED or whether you display the inputs as LEDs, all of that is going to be up to you. So you have to decide what you want. But at the very minimum, you have to have an input called V and an output called G for when you have reached the sequence. Uh, you have to have some mechanism for advancing, so you'll have a clock. Um, and you should have some way to reset. Now, I always do the reset by having a switch be the reset and then have it be synchronous, that it resets um, at the, the clock. Um, you could try having an asyn asynchronous reset, that you had a button or a switch that just reset it um, automatically. I was having trouble making that work, so I don't, you know, I can't really give advice on that. Uh, so, um... So your clock, and V, your input, and your reset are all going to be uh, just single bits. And your output, if, you are, if you're just outputting an LED to say you've reached your sequence, that's going to be a single bit. And then your state, the size uh, for the variable for your state, is going to depend on how many states you had. So in the video that I did with the example, um, when we reduced it, we came up with nine different states. This is not this is not what you would do. These are not the, the values that you'd use for your lab because I use different values here. But if we have nine states, that's one too many um, for three a three bit sequence. Um, you'd have to have a four bit sequence. So depending on how many states you have you want to figure out um, what power of 2 would give you uh, a big enough number to count for the number of states. So here we had 9. So 2 to the what is um, greater than or equal to 9 and so they have to have 2 to the 4th so we have to have a 4-bit variable to represent our states and so you could call these 0000000001 zero, 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 you can do them in order if you want um, how it, it doesn't really matter how you do them but um, you if you have more than 8 states then you will need to have uh, 4 bits to, re to hold the size of your state and if you recall, the way that I always do finite state machines is I have two always blocks. So when you set this up, you're going to have two always blocks. So you're going to have two always blocks, and one always block is going to be where you um, define what your next state is going to be. So this always block would probably be always at V and uh, state, maybe. And that's where you determine what your next state is going to be. And then you'll have another always block. And that one's going to be at the positive edge of the clock. And on that one, that's going to be the one where you advance the state. Um, and so that's why we need to have these variables for next state and for next G, um, and because that would be where you uh, say what the what the next value is going to be, and then you actually assign the next value in the second always block. So that's why we have two always blocks. 
One other thing you may want to have, up to you, you may want to have parameters uh, to stand for your states. And so um, however you define them uh, and whatever states you ended up having, uh, you could have them all in here. Mine are fairly random. I wouldn't, I would not just copy exactly these because uh, yours are not likely to be the same. You're not likely to have the same states, but it really does not matter how you assign them. Um, but you can ha you can have those parameters as well. And then um, you'll want to decide, well, what is it that you want to look at when you get to your always block? And what you want to decide is um, what your output is and also what your next state is. So, um, I thought the easiest thing to probably do was to have a case statement and have a case state on, based on your state. And then you'll figure out what your next state is based on your current state. So, if I'm in state A, what am I going to do? If I'm in state B, what am I going to do? and so forth and default you should have that as well now um, within each state you'll have to say what your next state is going to be and and what the output is now if you did it correctly you should only have three places where you're going to have an output of one. Now, again, remember, this chart does not go with what your situation is, but you st should still only have uh, a few situations where the output is one. If this were the, uh, the project, that the same settings as your project, then what I would do is rather than assigning an output in each case here, I would have it like this. I would say um, if if state equals equals let's see in my diagram if state is k okay so if state equals equals k that would be one way I'd have an output of one or state equals equals h and v equals zero So, uh, and then in this instance, I would say G, or next G, next G will equal zero, else next G will become equal, whoops, that was a one next g will equal 1, else next g will equal 0. Um, and so if you look, I have my compound condition here. So one way that I could get a 1 um, is if I'm in k, and if I'm in state k, it doesn't matter what v is. So if the state equals k. The other way is if the state equals h and v equals 0. So I have state equals h and v equals zero each of these is in parentheses and the whole thing is in parentheses okay so i can do my output there because that's fairly easy but for my uh, next state i will have to do something perhaps for each state but i notice here that in this example i have um, Three of my states, H, I, and K, all are going to go to A no matter what. So I might just have as my default, 
x state is a. And then I don't have to put all my cases in. So I can put in um, a, b, c, d, e, f. And default, and in case. Now, you're not going to want to put in exactly what I put in because it would not be right because I'm not detecting the same sequences. But what I have here is I see that if v equals zero, uh, I would go to b, and if v equals one, I would go to c. So for case a, I'd say if v. Uh, next state is B, else next state, actually was it if V, if V was 1, next state was C, else next state is B. Um, I don't think I need a begin and an end because I just have a single if statement. And I don't think I don't need begins and ends around those ifs either. Okay, and then for B, for state B, I'm doing D and E. So, same thing. And then for C, I'm just going to F, so I don't need an if statement. For D, it's H and I. And for E, it's I and K. And for F, it is just I. So this always block um, will define what your next state is. Um, and again, don't use these values because those are not right. You'll have to use the one from your reduced state table. Oh, I just realized that I have, uh, I used five bits because originally I did not, I did not have my states reduced that well. So I have my uh, state and next state here as five bits. It only needs to be four. So I can do there. Okay, so now let's think about how we would want to do our other always block. So this needs to actually advance the states. So you do need to pay attention to if you have a reset or not. So um, the first thing you'll want to do is check for the reset. So um, I just have the reset as a switch. and. If you have the reset, you want to make sure that you go back to your reset state. So you would say um, state becomes equal to um, A, it was my reset state, and um, you'll also want your output to be zero. And then depending on what else you have set up, this is this could also be where you set some LEDs. Um, and otherwise, if it's not in your reset state, then you want your state to become your next state. And you want G to become your next G. And 
end module. Now, I would hope that you would do a little bit more than what this is because this doesn't do much at all. Um, the only, I mean, it'll, it will recognize the sequence. Well, it'll recognize a different sequence, not the sequence that you have to do. Um, but it doesn't do much else other than that. So then how would you need to set your constraints? Well, let's see, we've got, we need to have a clock. And so the constraint that you would want for the clock would be, you want to use uh, a button for the clock. So you're going to want to have these lines. And that is pin U17. And if you look at the board, the little uh, buttons on the board, the bottom one is U17. So it's the bottom of those buttons that you would use to advance the clock. Let's see what else you have. You also have um, V and reset are switches, so you'll need to have two switches. And so um, I did the first one, which is all the way over on the right for my input, and the last one all the way over on the left for my reset. You can, of course, do whatever switches you want. Then you also will have Um, so we got the clock, we got the reset, we got the input, you also have an output. That output, the easiest way to do an output is just with an LED. So you'll pick one of your LEDs and you will map that LED to G. I mapped the last one to G, the, the one farthest over on the left. And all of that would be enough to get the basics going, but uh, you'll probably want to do a little bit more than the basics.